We're live. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me on another episode of the Aperture Fight Focus podcast. Guys, I want to let you know we don't really um, prepare for these things, and we like to do it live. Um, down the road, we're going to cut this up so that you can get right to the goods. But today, I want to tell you a little story, first of all. We have this thing called the Aperture Fight Forum on Facebook, and it is jam-packed with some just incredible minds. We've got like doctors, lawyers, rocket scientists, fight experts, coaches, fighters, ex-fighters. We got cops, military veterans, and martial artists from all walks of life, and we are deep, guys. We are deep into this debate. Can dancing make you a better fighter? Now... <laughs> It's it's gotten quite heated. I'm glad to announce that it has uh, it's subsided a little bit. We've kind of turned the corner. We're getting a little comedic with it because we really just we can't get to the bottom of it. And uh, I don't know why, but we're gonna try today with one of my homeboys, Coach Rage Ing. Today's topic is can Nancy make you a better fighter, Coach? Let's get right to it. What well, can it? Uh, well, you want the uh, the TikTok version? <laughs> well, you know, maybe we should uh, withhold the good stuff. Okay. Uh, first, um, you right. have a, you have a history. You have a history with dancing, do you not? I do. I, I do. Mean. So, okay. So the the concept, I think it's silly, and it set the forum on fire. Yes. So, <laughs> but what I what I was hoping to do with this discussion is uh, try and separate the signal from the noise, which is actually kind of what we want to do on the forum, anyway, as yeah. often as possible. Yeah, of course. Um, so <clears throat> the number one, uh, the go to. That uh, anytime you say dancing and fighting, anyone that says no, no, dancing and fighting don't go together, uh, the knee jerk reaction is, well, you just can't dance or you hate dancing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, do you have that video that I sent you? The, the video of you dancing? That's right. Oh, man. We're going to open. I sure do. Yeah. I sure do. Let's have a look at this. Feeling a change in the air. Damn. There you go. Some high high tech editing. Um, so that's from 2008. Um, my wife was hired as a dancer choreographer for a company called Full Pod Dance. Okay. Uh, and through nepotism and convenience, I was cast. I, so that was a professional dance dance performance. <laughs> um, Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, so dance for me i'm i'm i love dance uh story time uh that dance performance right there is where taryn and i met sarah so just opening my life like a book uh i have two two wives uh we live in a threesome it's all very mutual and uh and functional um so to that's me, cool. I, I think people want to talk about that now, but <laughs> <laughs> let's move yes, on. Yes. Can, can, uh, can polygamy make you a better fighter? <laughs> yeah. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I live wow. with two women and I live with two women. Wow. Um, <laughs> Crazy. So, okay, go on. There you go. So, uh, I live with two professional dancers, mm -hmm. uh, have a little bit of dance experience myself, even though, you know, the, it, it was, it was, uh, adequate, my performance. Um, 
So that's just to get that silly argument out of the way. It's got nothing to do with whether I like dance or don't like dance. Sure. Uh, so that's that's kind of where I'm starting. Um, dance cannot help your fighting. Okay. Unless. Uh, not we'll, yet. We'll, we'll wait that. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Go Un ahead. Unless. And except for. So there mm -hmm. are some very specific parameters or your definitions have to be so loose. What is help or what does it mean to make you better? What's dance? What's fighting? Your, your parameters have to be so loose that it's right. like, yeah, okay. Uh, is dancing going to yield better results than sitting on the couch doing nothing? Of course. Is right. that what we're talking about? Well, I think it's important to, to consider those things, right? Because you're a professional. You deal with professionals all day long. Most people are not, right? right. And these conversations happen within the circle of, for the most part, hobbyist martial artists, right? And so when, when we talk about some of the benefits of dance, like these things are indisputable, Right. It does help you with your coordination. It does help lung function and cart de again, depending on the dance. Um, I do and, have a and depending on the metrics. Right. Like right. Who, who are you to begin with? Right. Who are you to begin with? What you know, uh, what is your current level of fitness? What it, it, it may actually. So. The way, what we're actually talking about mm -hmm. again is transfer. Right. Okay. And briefly, uh, uh, when we talk about transfer, for those who may not have tuned in in prior podcasts, what exactly are we talking about when we talk about these transfer transfers, near transfer, far transfer, transferability of skills? Okay. So in brief, what does that mean? So uh, transferability of skills is m so broad and loose that we actually don't really talk about that in sports science. Uh, the definition of transfer is, does this exercise, what effect does this exercise have on that skill? So we're talking about exercise. Usually we talk about the paradigms of strength and how it affects performance. Mm -hmm. um, there's positive tra transfer, which in the industry, colloquially, everyone just throws around and that's what transfer means, using it incorrectly. Uh, there's positive transfer, there's neutral transfer, which means I'm a good driver. So if I, I drive well, what effect does that have on my, my right cross? No effect. It's neutral. And then there's negative transfer, uh, shadow boxing with, for too long with, uh, too heavy a dumbbell will have a, a detrimental effect on my punch. Nice. <laughs> you like that? I do. I worked that out okay. for us. Yeah, nice. So mm -hmm. the the thing that I saw happen on, on the, the forum, first of all, let me commend the boxing assholes. They were they were on on great behavior. Um, <laughs> okay, real quick, guys. So we have a couple of we call them boxing assholes on the forum. By the way, go join the Aperture Fight focused forum. The Aperture Fight forum is really some high level conversations there mixed in with meme wars and silliness. But the boxing assholes are the guys that, that I coined that term because no, you know, no, you didn't. I did. Oh, no, did you? Did no, you do it? No, it was some random dude attacking. One of the posts that that is like really yeah I don't know I don't remember who it was but you're the, you're the one that started using it as a term of endearment yeah and then yeah. the group kind of took it back and there's yeah. there's a number of us that identify as boxing assholes well the thing about boxing guys real quick and and why we call them boxing assholes and again whether or not you use that as a term of endearment or is derogatory is because boxing has a very rich platform to test out your theories. And so that produces a kind of certainty that many martial artists can never hope to really accomplish because, you know, you don't have 
Wing Chun fights. Uh, you, you know, really, you don't. Uh, you don't. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that's that's the whole point of it. It's because and, these boxers, these boxing coaches, um, and certainly can, not at the the international level. And the, right, the elite right, professional, ex ex exactly. It's like you're not going to have Wing Chun tournaments in, you know, well, I guess it's everywhere. But you know, boxing is boxing. You you have boxers from every corner of the world, so it's a very and rich, very millions and millions of dollars in the sport. Yeah, exactly, exactly. There's <laughs> there's an incentive to get good, and so these theories get to be proven. Right, right, and so and with with certainty comes a kind of assholeness which is and, i think and just the aggressiveness of the sport yeah and uh, i also think like the 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 environment with which boxers are crafted from ain't absolutely. no softies there like if you can't hold yourself emotionally yeah. right in check because some some dude's breaking your balls you, you're not going to do too well in a yeah. boxing gym whereas in a in a martial arts dojo it's like we respect even the cricket um, <laughs> so yeah. there's yeah. that. So boxing assholes, amazing people. I love them. Uh, but go on. I, I, I just, I think over time, because part of the reason the boxing asshole moniker came about is because right or wrong, the, the terseness, the directness, the, uh, the tone in which their message was delivered. And again, the certainty and everything else that you, it, it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way yeah and over the past few years months whatever uh we've been systematically becoming more diplomatic so on this particular this particular kerfluffle uh dancing and boxing grew out of an article uh about lomachenko and yeah. lomachenko's father and uh, they were presenting the concept that uh, his father pulled Lomachenko out of boxing, put him into traditional dance, yeah. and Ukrainian that's where, dance, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's, it's <laughs> those, you, you ever see those like Russian Ukrainian dance where they're like crouching, they're like, hey, 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 right, right, yeah, and then they they implied that that's where the incredible footwork and rhythm and da -da 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 -da, grew out of right ignore these comments Thank i'm you. just flashing yep. them for yep. them because <laughs> i want to i want to acknowledge anyone who comments man i love you guys thank yeah. you we may or may and, not get to them they usually have, uh, distract rage but yeah yeah i'd like <laughs> look, a shiny thing in with the, oh okay so um, and, then, go on. and then i feel like i have to acknowledge it and respond to it so that's where it grew out of um and so it were it was specifically boxing and dancing. Right. And so the 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 boxing assholes, they're they're emphatically, no, stop it. It's silly. Cut it out. Yeah. Um pretty much across the board. Uh any high level, professional level coach, boxer, that was pretty much their yeah, their take stop on stop with that shit. Uh, so let me, let me get into it at higher levels of specificity at higher levels of performance. There's no transfer. Uh, so it, so part of the problem is that we didn't define our terms before we started arguing. We didn't define boxing, right? Because there's fitness boxing there's hobbyist boxing there's amateur boxing there's professional boxing and then there's world-class elite professional boxing yes so what are we talking about so because of our experience and our biases our biases biases i don't know uh one of those right one of them <laughs> hey can i vape by the way is that cool while, while we do this guys i hope it's okay uh, well, you have to post their response. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure YouTube's fine with it, and that's all we care about. Okay, so I'm just I'm just being Canadian about it. Oh, oh, I okay. Need to relax. Okay, go on. I'm Californian, so 
Same, same. Yeah. <laughs> In some respects. <laughs> go on. We were you're talking about defining what the heck we're right, talking about. Right. So the the default for most people is their own experience and their own perspective. So the professional coaches, the professional boxers, the uh, the higher level boxers are going to say, no, stop it. That's silly. Boxing training improves boxing. Certain strength and conditioning, certain fuel system. There's a regimented program designed for boxing. That's what works. Stop it with the silliness. But so that's, but if we define boxing way more loosely, mm -hmm. right? Punching, punching, fitness, boxing, right? Um, right. And then better. What, what is, what do you mean better? Right. Yeah, so the more yeah. loose your term, your terms are, and the more specific the situation you think up in your mind, then it's like, <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. So, um, an obese man who's never done anything before and who's sitting on his couch, uh, starts taking boxing and has absolutely no rhythm or coordination and also starts taking dance, which, so then, okay, the learning to move your foot on a specific rhythm and yeah. learning to learn, maybe that can help. Right. So if you're really yeah. loose with your terms, you can find a way to make it work. I also think, um, tell me about this, uh, when you take up dancing, because there's a certain phase of, of your of your development and coordination. Like if you took up dancing as a kid. So, right, it'll, so ahead, my, my TikTok, you know, you, 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 jump, you boom, right? My TikTok summary, <laughs> yeah. right? Which that's now our shorthand, by the way. TikTok summary. Yeah. Can dancing make you a better fighter? No unless you're really sloppy and, and general and loose with your, your terms and measurements, uh, and then except for, and that's the, that's the exception. The exception is, oh, I love you. Childhood. I love so, you, man. Go on. I don't, I personally don't think children are athletes. I think children are children and should grow and develop as children and grow into young athletes. Um, so there is uh, what's called a, a generalist phase of childhood development when talking about sports science, uh, where for health, well-being, longevity, generalizing yields superior results so uh lomachenko for example he was young and he was specializing in boxing his dad pulled him out of boxing put him into dance and other things and generalized rather than specialized right um for 97 98 99 percent of the population that's the best option because children are not athletes. They may develop into an athlete, right? But a very small percentage of children develop into athletes. So don't break them, overwhelm them, injure them while they're young. Have them grow up happy, healthy with many options with a broad general development. So that's where dancing helps help. absolutely absolutely will <clears throat> improve x and if x is fighting great if x is i don't know <laughs> swimming track and field track if, and if, field if, right it's it's a generalist approach now um when we are talking about athletic transfer and sports science there are groups and uh what, what you would call lenses to view things through uh and we've we've discussed this on other podcasts but we'll reiterate here you've got the specifists 
specificity is everything. And specifists are almost always right, except when they're wrong or inappropriate. Generalists, where, ah, you know, do a little CrossFit and do a little this and da, da, da. Generalists are generally wrong, except for when they're right or in childhood, when it is the exception, the time to do it. And you, you, can, you can predict disagreement between a specifist and a generalist, right? Because Absolutely. They don't, they Absolutely. Don't, Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Right, Absolutely. because their 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 considerations are different. Absolutely. I think I think that's that's. I'll leave it at that. Their considerations are different. You could one well, and then it's and then the you name. have then you have the holistics, the, the right. holistic perspective, right. and holistics are actually always right and rarely ever useful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you eat that piece of broccoli. It's going to make your life better. Oh, okay. it's the, it depends answer. You know, like you're not going to be, it, it's always going to depend, but that's so, when it comes to discussion, that's not really providing much. Right. So uh, somebody posted uh, in, I want to say Minneapolis, but I'm not sure. There was a boxing gym that rented some or, or co-shared or rented or leased or sublet. I don't know, shared space with a dance company. Yep. And they said, Hey, wouldn't it be cool if you guys boxed and we danced and blah, 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 blah. And then they said, Oh, it opened our minds so much. Well, that's a holistic benefit. It opened your mind. It gave you a new perspective. Da, 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 da. Okay. It's got nothing to do with the skills, the training or the <clears throat> development that we're talking about. Right. But it's cute marketing and uh, kept your business open. Awesome, right? Um, so those are, the, those are the lenses that we tend to view things from. Specialization can be inappropriate. It can be inappropriate at certain levels of development in in life so it can be very inappropriate for children uh but it can also be inappropriate for hobbyists and amateurs who don't have the physiology to or the skill set to perform the specialized exercises or to extract the benefit from it that you can't, a you can't even might. do the you can't even do the exercise right how are you going to get the benefit right Right. You, you can't even, you know, you can't even last more than two reps. How are you going to get the benefit? Well, Rage, man, the thing is that, you know, us hobbyists, not us, you and me, <laughs> me hobbyist, casual hobbyists, we, you know, we like to emulate the professionals, right? right? We, right. we want, we see what these professionals are doing and there's a very big compulsion for us to want to emulate it. So whether that is generalized training, whether that's specified training, whether that's meditating under waterfalls or eating a certain diet, we want to do what the pros do. And I, you know, I've recognized that, Hey, sometimes nah, be like, that's not a good idea. That's, that's not a good idea. <laughs> right. Not a good idea. Um, especially because you don't, you know, what is our truth filter? What, what is our discernment? What, how, right. how are you? Wait, you, yeah, I, got... I know what it, it's feeling. Ah. I feelings. <laughs> I feel better. I feel more empowered. I feel like my kick is faster. I feel like I, my punch is stronger. I watched an interview of a Kobe Bryant mm. talking about how he did ballet to strengthen his ankles because he took his daughter and he was having problems rolling his ankles in basketball. And so he took his daughter to ballet and said, hey. Those exercises that they're doing, I bet you that would make my ankle stronger. I'm going to do ballet. And yeah, ballet did strengthen his ankles. And he, and also how many people on his team did he have addressing his ankles? Um, so by the way, the Simpsons did it. Although, <laughs> I don't know if you remember that episode. <laughs> ah! I don't know if you remember that episode, but Bart Simpson took some ballet and so we, uh, we he was made, a better karate fighter. We made history. The the right. Simpsons 
predicted. They predicted it. our it's, conspiracy. Oh awesome. man, awesome! But w anyway, what, what's what's your takeaway from this whole Kobe thing? Uh, that he's reiterating to a journalist or an interviewer uh, an entertaining story about his daughter. Right. How accurate is the information? Yeah. It's uh, sensationalized. It's reiterated. It's cool. It's exciting. Right. Is it true? I mean, true in the sense that, hey, you forgot about your physical therapist and the team chiropractor and right. the seven strength specialists that you've got. Right. Sure. We didn't mention them because daughter ballet class is much better television. Right. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah. And again, so the who's going to dig into it? Who's going to dig into it? You know, right. like they're just going to be like, yo, Kobe said, take ballet. I'm going to take some ballet. Yeah. Yeah. I did ask Sean Merriman. Uh, Cause who's, people, who's it? Sean Merriman, uh, his nickname was lights out. He was uh, a football player, uh, I think for the chargers, but um, anyway, he, he trains with us uh, at black house and in, did some weight training with us. And so I, uh, I asked his opinion on it. He didn't really answer me. He just kind of scoffed and rolled his eyes. And <laughs> that's an answer. <laughs> I don't know what else you were waiting for. That's an answer. Yeah. So it was, it was a, it was a cool story, right? Yeah. It was, right. Uh, it got, it gets the, and the ballet community is going to love the crap out of that, you know, and right. it's, that's cool. Yeah. But again, who knows? Anyway. D depending on your considerations and your scope and general generalization and specificity, you yeah. know, he was so, spending time with his daughter. Awesome. I, I think this, I, I think, you know, not so much this topic, we can use this topic as an example of how to talk to each other, how mm -hmm. to work with each other. Right. Um, because what, what was happening, the, uh, the boxing assholes were coming from their perspective and their bias right? and de defined in their mind boxing as professional boxing uh, and dance as professional dance, right? Yeah. Where <clears throat> boxing has objective structures, rule sets, mm -hmm. dance is art. It's much more subjective. So you can define dance, right? And then good or bad is completely subjective. Where in boxing, we've got judges and we have the knockout. So boxing is more, <clears throat> and, and that's kind of the, the, like you were saying, specificists and generalists always have. Yeah. Specificity and generality are always going to be. Yes. Right objectivity and subjectivity are always going to be banging right, right. and so that we we need to be a little bit more clear in our mind about yeah. what we are asking what we are you know yeah. what, and and right out in front define your terms and understand you're coming from a bias of your experience and your understanding well bro if people did this what you're suggesting that we do. I mean, that would literally stop all of the nonsensical disagreements between MMA people and martial artists, because uh, it would it would get rid of that. So that ain't happening, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that is not happening. But for the people who are listening, the people who are part of our circle, and and you guys, the audience, being a broader part of our circle, it 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 really is dependent upon the scope and the lens that you're choosing to approach this topic from. And even in the absence of, you know, one side giving way to the other, even just a little bit, just know that it, there is that. There is that. And that is all about, you know, specificity and generalization. That all depends on, um, I mean, we can even break it down even broader. Where are you in life? Who are you? 
Um, yeah, but then again, we're getting in. We're this is a slippery slope. We're going to start talking about all sorts of things. But you know, Rage, when I first met you, one of the things that I appreciated about you was that you can you you kind of tread the line. Like you you can do you can be both. And it all depends on Oh, I think I thought you were taking a dramatic pause, but I think we uh we froze a little bit here. So I don't know what to do here. I don't know. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, we're okay. back. <laughs> we're back. Whoa. <laughs> man. see that's the thing we go in live but anyway um uh what i was saying is like depending on your role you're you're gonna give the answer that is most appropriate to what your role is right is, so. is, is that accurate so. if you're a strength and conditioning coach that's your role at the moment or if you're a boxing coach that's your role at the moment if somebody asks you hey what do you think oh should we be dancing you'd be like hell no right right, right? But if and, as a martial artist, which is is what I like about you, you, you represent the totality of perspectives, but you can partition them. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I I would like, I would like that to be more common. Me too. You know? Me too. Because if I asked um, you, hey, is Wing Chun bullshit, or is Aikido bullshit? Well, first I need you to define bullshit, <laughs> and then could you define Aikido, right? So, um, right, and I think another thing that is important when people are interacting on subjects like this, there's a difference between coming to argue or coming to prove mm -hmm. your point and presenting your perspective or presenting ideas or coaxing other people's yeah. ideas yeah and you know if if we get the egos in check <clears throat> first and then you know yeah i i think i think that's important i think that's that's really important and what, what do you think about um what do you think about bruce lee uh, that's a that's a that's just a question what are you <laughs> right i'm not gonna load it with nothing what do you think about bruce lee i think a lot about bruce lee um i i i don't even know how to i i um his his book his philosophy uh huge impact on my life uh I was itty bitty when his movies came out and but those were like the first action films that I watched. Now I go back and watch them and it's like, mm, okay, Terrible. but go go back and watch anything from the seventies, you know, any, if, you know? Um, so I think, I think, uh, I think he made tremendous impact, tremendous influence. Um, I don't know. Was he a great fighter? Was he just an actor? uh i don't know i didn't know him right so i people that i know and i trust their opinion have told me that he did fight for real um but regardless of whether he did or he didn't he organized a thought process and a system uh, of mma uh so you know i think i think he's uh I think he's extremely important. Um, Me but too. That and he was a mean... cha-cha champion, by the way. Exactly. Apparently. Right. So, uh, so Matt, now I have to reverse everything because Bruce Lee was a cha-cha champion. But you know, see, people want to. They come with the preconceived notion, and they they mm -hmm. want they see a correlation, right? Because yeah, footwork and dancing is is pretty pretty close right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so from a general standpoint you're moving your feet to a specific position <clears throat> on time that skill has to has to translate has to transfer right right and people it want it to be true and so they start from there and then argue 
Right. And we saw this on the and forum. Here, what about this did. guy? What about this, right. this guy danced? Floyd Floyd well, Mether wasn't dancing with the stars. Exactly. Right. And <laughs> and so if we if we go back to talking about transfer, athletic transfer, um just because something has positive athletic transfer today doesn't mean the exact same thing with the exact same person is still going to have positive transfer tomorrow. Physiology changes, skill changes, timing changes, biology changes. So what, what has positive transfer today may or may not have positive transfer tomorrow. I love that. Hey, that reminds me of, of a quote, if I may. Yeah. And that quote is, uh, uh, it may be from the art of war, but it goes something along the lines of, do not rely on the tactics that won yesterday's battle today. One of my favorite quotes. There you Sorry go. to interrupt there, but I think we were no, talking about that, the that same thing. thing. <laughs> so, so I think that's important to to keep in mind just because it won the battle yesterday doesn't mean shit about today. Um, then there's neutral transfer, which the vast majority of dance is going to have neutral transfer. It's it's even when you say neutral transfer, I yeah. tend in my mind that tends to lean positive. It doesn't <laughs> tend to lean negative. <laughs> right? but is that a bias? I mean, if something neutrally transfers and we're not doing things to purposefully harm ourselves, it's got to lean a little bit more towards positive. Well, if that's, it's that's not going to be holistic, direct. That's the holistic perspective. Right. Right. Because now we're not just talking about athleticism, skill. Uh, sure. Myelination. Um we are talking about much less measurable, quantifiable, definable yeah. things, right? Like if I enjoy dancing and I'm yeah. a professional fighter and yeah. it relieves me from stress and it, it, it puts me in a better mental state and it prepares yes. me to, to receive more information and so I can have a better communication with my coach and I'm not so stressed out about my family life. Exactly. Right. Well, would that right. still be a neutral trend? No, that's that's the holistic. That's the holistic perspective. Yeah. Right. And a holistic perspective is so vague in general. It's not useful. Right. Right. But then, but then, well, hold on. Let me challenge that for a second. It, dep it yeah, <laughs> depends. Yeah. Another useless friggin'. No, but, it but but you know it it depends on on what we're talking about here. Right? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. These... You're absolutely okay. right. Yeah. Okay. But so again, because of my background and my biases, yeah, I define useful as metrics, proxies, formula. This fits in here. We have an answer, <clears throat> right? Where, yeah, biochemically, for most people, any form of dance has a positive biochemical response. That's why, that's why that's why it's ubiquitous on this planet culture to culture yeah ethos to ethos it's there right yeah so um so then you could say well you know the the relief the release of uh serotonin norepinephrine and and dopamine in the specific da, 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 that has to have a positive effect on the body as a whole and and it has a Ba, 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 and, and now your lungs and your heart and your kidneys and and all okay okay yeah and ballet did contribute to making kobe bryant's ankles stronger but that that's three four segments removed from right what we're actually talking about and then the argument is uh, what else could they have done that would have provided equal benefit you know um, well in, instead superior, of dancing superior benefit really right well, there's it, how do we more affected more efficient more right it's like if that's the result that you want rather than being three four steps removed right 
here yes. here are the benefits of dancing again by the way um but you know I, I remember watching tony ferguson in one of the ufc vlogs right yeah uh and i saw him and maybe even israel adesanya they were playing video games before yes before a big event yeah right so then we're going to have a discussion about are can and, video and, games well, make you a better fighter right and both of those gentlemen uh are, are phenomenal dancers Mm -hmm. Both Tony Ferguson and and Izzy, uh, right? Izzy Izzy did a whole performance in Auckland when he did his walkout that was phenomenal. Uh, Tony was a a break dancer, um. So, but again, I I'm pretty good on my motorcycle. I'm I'm pretty good. I'm not I'm not elite, but I'm better than average, and I I, I can corner pretty well, and I can accelerate real fast. That. It's okay. Does separate, riding separate your thing. motorcycle make you a better fighter? Right. I, I get, <laughs> there yes, you go. That's my answer. There um, you hey, go. I, I want to play you a little clip, brother. Okay. Uh, and it's about uh, it's about these these Cubans. So here it is. Yeah. Los boxeadores cubanos somos los mejores del mundo porque tenemos una coordinación perfecta. También tenemos un coraje. We're going to play that again because my banner got in the way. Yeah, so, okay. yeah couldn't it read it. Los boxeadores cubanos somos los mejores del mundo porque tenemos una coordinación perfecta. También tenemos un coraje y un corazón divino. cubano es único en la esencia de la escuela de boxeo cubana es pegar sin recibir pero para eso hay que tener una buena coordinación de pierna y mano para no recibir Al contrario los giros todo eso va también en el baile si te pones a mirar viene incluido también con un baile lo único que se le agrega unos hopos Profíces pueden observar que en ese movimiento, en ningún momento, se rompe la separación de las piernas y es una vez que ya todo el cuerpo, y de ahí ya estamos girando para acá, cuando vienen los golpes, ya incorporamos los golpes, pero con una coordinación. Por eso que en, en, en todos los países dicen, bueno, los cubanos pegan duro, pero no es que peguen duro, sino la coordinación que se tiene y la efectividad que se tiene de la cadena cinemática. So this gentleman seems to be trying to close that bridge up a little bit, but what well, do you think? So again, what are what are our definitions? Right. So a, it's amateur boxing. So I object to the calling themselves the best boxers in the world. Um, as an American, I have to, I feel you, I, you know, okay. Amateur maybe, but they are professional amateurs competing in the amateurs, right? Which is the old communist trick that has been tried and true for forever. You state fund and they have lifelong professionals competing in amateurs. So, okay. Um, that's, that's off topic. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's okay. It's okay. Um, but uh, um, point, point, point noted. <clears throat> so, uh, yes, yes. Good footwork is a lot like dance and that's where the confusion comes from. Okay. But let's define our terms. What is footwork and what is dance, right? And what dance are we talking about now? Can you make a dance, which is a dance is subjective and broadly defined. Can you make a dance with footwork and put it to music? Yes. Yes, because dance is open, artistic, and subjective. But can you make a flamenco? Right. Or a ballet or a right. salsa? 
No, because now those are defined. And this footwork is not that footwork. You may have just empowered all the 1990s uh, Taibo practitioners out there. <laughs> so so Coach Ray said it counts. No. <laughs> I also think there's a cultural element to here in, in Cuban style oh, yeah. from a very Hell early yeah. age. Right? Hell yeah. So there's Hell that. Yeah. And, and, you know, <laughs> I, I was sounding cantankerous. I don't want to take away from the fact that Cubans do have an amazing propensity boxing history team yeah. uh it's just i i just my ire got lifted when uh when they said they're the best in the world I was like, eh. so <laughs> all right so um we're approaching 45 minutes i are at about 45 minutes here we gotta we wrap go. this up in an hour yep. what's up with these photos that you sent me bro oh okay so that uh was relevant so when we were talking about not that picture yet that's the last one so we'll just put mike tyson up. there we go so we were talking about uh generality and when generality is appropriate in childhood development because children are not athletes uh children should develop in a happy healthy but 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 the problem with that prescription formula ideology is the outliers specialized so Mike Tyson is an example of someone that specialized at an extremely young age and went on to do incredible things. Manny Pacquiao specialized at an incredibly young age. Uh, early on when Manny was, was boxing, he would put foot fishing lures in his underwear because he was too small and too young and he was underweight. So he would actually fishing lures or not yeah. lures but sinkers, sinkers yeah in his underwear to make weight uh and then F floyd May mayweather is another outlier who specialized now my friend who you kept putting up there uh bobby perez started wrestling i don't know how old he is in this picture but he's incredibly young and he has He's, he's just a phenomenal wrestler. He stayed with wrestling. He specialized in wrestling. Uh, there should be a picture of him with uh, Chris Cyborg. As a teenager, he was Chris Cyborg's <laughs> grappling partner. Uh, and then there should be one more picture of him. Now, uh, there we go. Now he lives at the Olympic Training Center. Uh, now, you could say that he cross-trained all the wrestlings. He did folk style, freestyle and Greco-Roman, and he's now specializing in Greco-Roman. But, uh, so these were these pictures were to illustrate that the generalistic approach is safer and better for childhood, uh, higher percentage of well-being, blah, blah, blah. But if you have an outlier world champion, many of them did specialize young, and go on to dominate the world. Which Fantastic. Fantastic Bobby, is, Bobby is gonna do. He he's definitely gonna take home gold. Yeah. Next, Who's next this year. guy? Who's this Bobby guy? Bobby Perez. Let's go. Yeah. This yep. guy, huh? American born grappler uh, on Instagram. He is he's unbelievable. He's phenomenal. He some things, yeah. huh? That's incredible. Rage, I think we did pretty good here. I think <clears> we, we did. did. We did pretty good. So um, as, a, as a parent myself, I'm going to, I like to distill it. Um, you know, if, if you want to incorporate dance, but your your end goal is for your child to, to be in some sort of a fighting sport downstream, the time to get them into dance, maybe at the very beginning, early, early on, develop all of those benefits that we talked about coordination all agility timing yep. Yep. all that stuff and then and, as and soon as possible, generalize generalize right so any generalize. any any activity because dance has has its own risks and potholes and right dark side right for so, sure you know cautious with that culture also but yeah let your child first of all Again, I don't have children, so I, I don't know if I should even be giving advice, but don't 
tell your child, oh, you're going to be the next great. <laughs> Let your child become the next great whatever. Absolutely. Right? I, I, that's that's my opinion on it. But uh, I think I, I have heavy biases, but I think everyone, every child that is can benefit from dance. Every child can benefit from martial arts. Most can benefit from gymnastics. Um, man, I, I, I'm always shocked when I meet people that can't swim. You know, yeah. but I, I know some people can't ride a bike. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. So you were still summarizing. Go ahead. Yeah, I was I was um, I was saying that, you know, the, the benefit of dance as it relates to fighting will yield the most benefit at their developmental stages. Yes. Right. That would be yes. accurate. That is accurate. <clears throat> And depending on your immediate stage in life, we're not talking professionals here. Right. If dance can serve a good purpose for your improvement in your um, ability to to be healthier, and that has you know transferability into your ability uh, to fight or to fend off an attacker. But when you get to um, levels where we're talking about, you know, professional combat sports, it doesn't, it, it doesn't hold weight competitive, competitive. Or, or competitive sports. It competitive. doesn't really hold yeah. weight as far as it's direct, um, objective transferability to that fighting art. And there is no replacement for specified training when it comes to that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> awesome, um, brother. So, Is there... it, it, yeah, at, at the higher levels, at the competitive levels, it's all about program design, right? And the word cross training got thrown around a lot, right? And man, it's one of those things, you know, at the higher levels, professional coaches, uh, professional strength coaches, professional, you, you don't talk about cardio. You don't, you don't talk about functional, functional training, functional fitness, functional strength, functional. You don't talk about that. You don't talk about cross training. You talk about program design, right? Cause everything's cross training, right? If I have my fighters lifting weights, well, that's cross training, right? So it's, it's such a vague and it's a, it's more of a marketing term, right? Um, cardio, we talked about on another podcast, you don't talk about cardio, you talk about program design and fuel systems training, right? And then functional, functional is wholly subjective based on who's, a, who are you talking to? Um, an occupational therapist, their definition of functional from someone that just had a stroke is, can they get their spoon to their mouth? Well, then it's functional, right? My definition of functional is completely different. So it doesn't mean anything, uh, because it means everything and it's wholly subjective. So it's a, it's an industry buzz term that gets thrown around and, you know, when people, when they're, when they're asked to define something, well, what do you mean by that? And the first thing out of their mouth is, well, you know, <laughs> it's like, well, <laughs> if I knew, I wouldn't be asking you to define what you meant. <laughs> so I, anyway, I don't know how that popped in my head, but, uh, no, no, it's, it's all good, man. Um, yep. dude, we did this in record time. Yes. We did I this actually, I, I was, I was foolishly optimistic that we would actually get it done in, in less time to this, but see, this is, this always happens. You're like, ah, we did it in 45 minutes. And I'm like, that's awesome. And I'm going to talk for another 10. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is good. And thank you for being um, available and, uh, and helping us kind of work through this stuff. I, again, once again, man, I really love how you can, um, you really have this great balance and you have a great perspective and, there are, there are a whole lot of people um, that are that are that are out there who can speak as a strength and conditioning coach, right? right? And, and as a boxing coach, as an MMA coach, and then still sort of turn it around and say, "But hold on, 
I'm not saying I don't like traditional martial arts. I'm not saying these things don't have value, but and when we just, and how many of those guys have professional dance experience? I was on a stage. That's <laughs> <laughs> you are a unicorn, my friend. Uh, but thank you very much. This has been another great one. Thank you for thank calling you, me out for this. All um, right. Yeah. All right. We'll uh, we'll talk soon, my brother. All right. Next thank time. you so much. Bye. All right. There you go, guys. Again, I hope these podcasts really start to get some steam. And I know it's not easy to watch an hour worth of two people just talking about stuff. Uh, but I think the subsection of human beings, of fighters and martial artists here, whether they are professional or hobbyists, if you do find yourself sometimes alienated from both sides of the conversation, just know you're not alone. Um, there are people who navigate these conversations with a kind of uh, care and consideration that it really deserves. So, yeah, if you if you find yourself in, in, a, in a Jeet Kune Do forum or in a boxing forum or in a fight forum, just chill out for a second, sort of reassess your position and, you know, don't approach it as Coach Rage uh, so wisely advised. Don't approach it from the stance of I'm going to coax this person into believing that I am right and they are wrong. We all know that's a dead end street. It's a short flight path to frustration. Um, so again, today's discussion has been about whether or not dancing can make you a better fighter. The answer is yes. And the answer is no. Hope you guys enjoyed that. My name is GN. Thank you guys very much for uh, watching another episode of the Aperture Fight Focused podcast. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that like. And because we do these things randomly and out of the blue, if you do not want to miss the next time we hop on on YouTube on Aperture Fight Focus, make sure to hit that notification bell. Um, and really, Coach Rage Ng is someone that um, you should be following. That's his real name. I'm like, your name is Raging? Like the first time I made him Raging? Like, yeah, Rage, NG. So find him on the social media. And uh, until next time, I just want to say uh, thank you very much for joining